With the knowledge gained from the previous module, we can now confidently move on to creating a basic t-shirt pattern. At this point, you will become acquainted with a portion of the 2D tools and the sewing tools. Now, we will get to know the whole palette of tools throughout the course as well, but for now, let's focus on the basic ones for creating patterns. Tools for making patterns are the polygon tool, rectangle tool, and circle tool, which we use depending on the shape that we want. So for now, let's grab the rectangle tool, and you'll see that I'm able to create a rectangle in the 2D window by simply just clicking on it, and I get this dialog box where I can manually input the width and the height, or I can just go and drag to create a rectangle. So let's just create this simple rectangle over the silhouette. Now since we're creating a shirt, we're starting off by creating only the left part, which is actually the right part in the 3D window. And we could make a shirt out of one pattern in the front, but then we have a very slim chance of getting the two sides to be perfectly identical. So once I have this rectangle, I'm just going to mirror copy the other one. So let's grab our transform pattern tool and go control C and control R on our keyboards to create a symmetrical copy. This mirror copy is not essential right now, but if we had a more complicated pattern, for instance, it would make a difference. Since these are only two rectangles, which we will obviously change some more, we want the changes to be the same on both sides. That's why we're going to select both of the rectangles, right-click, and choose Symmetrization. And you'll see that the patterns become outlined with a bluish color, which probably looks familiar from the sweater and pleated dress patterns we had a look at in the previous module. Now, just looking at the two rectangles we have now, we see that something is not going to work, since there is no room for the arms and for her head to come through. So let's press X on our keyboard, and that way we select the Add Point tool, and we can add points here at our rectangle, and we're gonna, we can simply click on it with our left mouse button, or we can go and click our right mouse button to get a dialog box, and here we have three different options on how to uh, split the lines. We can split it by length, or we can go a uniform split, and just add points like that and what we're going to be using is the first option split into two lines and here we can input the amount the length of the first line that we want so let's go for 215 so this leaves a comfortable amount of room for the arm to come through and hit ok and next we're gonna add a point right here and this one is gonna go for the neck, so something around here. And as you can see, while we have symmetrization on, we don't even have to worry about the other side because everything is done automatically for us. So this makes our work a lot easier. So my suggestion is that as soon as you mirror copy the other side, immediately apply symmetrization afterwards. All right, so let's grab our Edit Pattern tool. And let's push these points down a bit. I'm going to press shift while I do so to get these constraints and push these a little bit down. All right, now it's starting to look more and more like the end pattern that we want. So this is for the front side and we're going to go ahead and continue with building the back side and we're going to do that simply by taking our transform pattern tool, selecting both of these patterns and copying it with Control C and Control V. Now I'm going to place my back patterns to the right. All right, now that we have everything set out like this, we can continue with sewing these parts together, connecting them, and then, of course, simulating them. But first, we need to position them in the 3D window around our avatar so they'll be able to simulate properly. Now the front pattern is okay the way it is, but the back pattern of course needs to be placed differently. So let's place it to the back of our avatar using our gizmo. But as you can see, something 
strange is going on. As you can see our patterns, one side of the pattern is kind of grayish colored and the other is in white. And this actually means that MD is differentiating between the front and the back side. And of course, the back side of the pattern always needs to be turned inwards. So looking into the avatar. So if we're placing patterns in the back, you see that it's reversed. And what we need to do is we need to select both of these back patterns. Right click and select flip horizontally. Now that way we get the white side, which is the outside where it should be. If we skip this process, we could, however, proceed with the sewing, but the sides would be reversed and making it a lot more difficult to sew. So I encourage you to always do this. You can rotate these patterns with the use of the gizmo, but flipping them horizontally is just an easier way to do it. All right. With that set, let's continue with sewing. Now, MD has two tools available for that, the segment sewing tool and free sewing tool. Since we only have simple lines that we would like to connect, we will take the segment sewing tool. And what we know for sure is that we want to connect these front sides together. And of course, same for the back sides. And you see that as I do this, the seam lines are also visible in our 3D window. Now, what I also would like to, I need to connect this front side. And while I click this area in the 3D window, you see that it's also indicated with a blue dot in the 2D window. So this side is going to go to this side. And it's also indicated. So let's just connect these two. And you see that the other side, because we have applied symmetrization beforehand, is done automatically for us. Now all that is left is for the shoulder parts. Now be careful not to sew the room for the head and the arms. So this part and only this part, see the blue dot here, is going to this one. And let's just connect that. Now you'll see it makes a difference if you click on the beginning or at the end of the line. Let's zoom in so we'll see better. Now if I connect the seam lines by clicking at the end of the line near the armhole, the seam line is crossed in the middle. But if I move my mouse to the other side, it goes straight. So be careful while you're sewing. And if I start sewing at this end of the line, then I need to do the same on the other pattern, so I'll get straight sewing lines. So I would advise you to be careful on that and always kind of have a look at how the seam lines are going, if they're straight or if they're reverse. And so far everything looks good, and the way everything is set out like this, we can begin by simulating. And we're going to do that by pressing spacebar on our keyboards, or you can just press this arrow right here. Okay, we're just going to pull it up a little bit. And congratulations, we basically just simulated our first piece of clothing right from scratch. Now that we have done this, that we have made like a simple shape and simulated it, we are now getting a, a better visual representation on how this pattern actually looks on the avatar. So now we can come into this pattern and select our edit pattern tool and move it and edit it around a little bit. So this usually involves pushing lines up and down and making them shorter or longer and such. And I think this shirt is a bit too long. So I'm just going to push everything a bit higher up. And as you can see, if I go to the constraint map, everything is all colored in red, which means that everything is extremely tight on her. So we have made the patterns a bit too small and we're going to fix that immediately. Just going to take my edit pattern tool and grab these lines in the middle and push them. There we go. And we immediately get a lot more looser. There we go.
the back side doesn't need to have this sort of V shape. Well, let me just pull these apart. I can push this up a bit since it's the back side. It can be closed off a little bit more. The parts on the shoulders are looking a bit too rigid and I'm going to fix that with my edit curvature tool and I'm going to curve this a bit. See how that fixes it. Okay. Maybe I can also make the shoulder parts a bit more narrow. And let's pull these a bit up as well. And I'm also going to curve the front side right here. All right. Now I, I have also planned to add some sleeves to the shirt and this is something we will tackle in our next clip.